Hey guys, and welcome to Provax. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly videos and check out the Facebook page. Welcome to part four of the mini-series where we will be going over the different classes of vaccines. If you missed parts one, two, or three, why don't you go ahead and click this link right up here and then come right back for, to watch the rest of this video. Okay, cool, so the rest of you guys can keep watching for part four. So I have actually really been looking forward to this class of vaccine. This one is my favorite class because of two reasons. But first, I think I should introduce you to my favorite class, which is the subunit vaccine. So this class of vaccine is probably the second most complicated type. We'll be talking about the most complicated vaccine class in the next video. A subunit vaccine involves taking only the individual epitopes of the antigenic regions of the pathogen. So I just laid a lot out there, and let me explain that sentence to you guys piece by piece. So first of all, the pathogen is the infectious agent, such as a bacteria or virus. You can have other pathogens as well, like fungi and parasites, but they don't typically make vaccines against those, so we're going to stick to bacteria and viruses. So this image right here just shows six different families of viruses, and it's just a good idea to see that viruses do come in different shapes and sizes. And this image just shows some common different types of bacteria. An antigen is a piece of the pathogen that elicits an immune response. Usually it's a protein, but it can be a sugar as well. It depends. And an epitope is a portion of the antigen that the antibody will bind to. This is important because just because an antibody binds to the antigen does not mean it will neutralize the pathogen. It needs to bind to the correct epitope. Think of it like this. Someone is trying to leave the room and you need to stop them. Now, if you bind their pinky, it's not really going to stop them now, is it? But if you bind them at the ankle or even better, the waist, then they aren't going anywhere. So that's why this vaccine is so cool, because rather than just putting the whole pathogen into the syringe and injecting it into the person and hoping that your immune system decides to bind the correct epitope instead of an ineffective epitope, the scientists take the guesswork out of it for your immune system. Think of it like spoon feeding the answers to your immune system. So how is this vaccine made? Well, first the researchers need to identify the effective antigens and epitopes on the surface of the pathogen and then figure out a way to grow them or extract them for the pathogen. Then that is put into the vaccine and injected into the patient to generate an immune response. So you might remember me saying that I had two reasons to love this vaccine class. Well, these are the reasons why. First, since it is only taking the effective portions of the pathogen, this increases the efficacy of the vaccine and also means that instead of injecting several thousand antigens, you only inject usually less than a hundred. Second, this is the reason I always give as to why you can't get the flu from the flu shot. You literally don't get a full virus, so there is no possible way for you to get the flu from the flu shot. You only get bits and pieces. So now for the negatives to this vaccine. First of all, this type of vaccine is not easy to make and can be expensive to develop because you have to identify the individual antigens first. Secondly, this also means that if a new strain of the same pathogen mutates, then this type of vaccine might not be as effective because the new strain might not use the same antigens as the old strain. This is the reason why you need a new flu shot every year. I hope you guys like this video. Like this video if you liked it. Leave a comment down below for future ideas for videos or any other questions you might have. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to be notified when I upload part 5. Thank you.